19th Street. Steve Henson, now a part of Scott Drew's staff at Baylor. Now, the full staff has been announced. Last week, to close out the week, Tweedy Carter, the great Baylor legend, he joined us. Steve Henson joins us, Craig Smoke, Paul Catalina, and, and I'm David Smoke. I did not realize this, and I'm telling you, man, the reaction to you being hired on Scott Drew's staff from a lot of people that I know that aren't a part of Baylor, uh, you were a decathlete, you're a single-digit <laughs> golfer, you might have been the greatest athlete ever to come out of Kansas or among the legends. Uh, is this all right, Steve? Man, it all sounds incredible. I don't know if any of that's true. Uh, the decathlete part, that's true. I, I do like to play golf. That part's true, but... Uh, yeah, the rest, that'd be a reach for that, that third one there, for sure. By the way, this segment with Steve Henson, now part of Scott Drew's staff at Baylor, brought to you by Richard Carr, Buick GMC, and the Baylor Bear Hotline. So what was the conversation like with uh, Coach Drew when he was looking to, to replace some of those that left for really good opportunities around the country? Well, it was just interesting how it, how it all unfolded. You know, I, I had made a call into him, obviously, known him for a long time and, and had so much respect for him. Uh, you know, we went head to head for, for all those years when I was at Oklahoma, I was at Oklahoma for five seasons. So we, so we went head to head, saw him on the road recruiting uh, him and his staff and just, just really respected the way, you know, they, they do their run their program here. You know, it's just an elite culture. You know, we were proud of our culture at Oklahoma and had tons of respect for the way coach drew and his staff did things. So, uh, the initial conversation, just kind of casual talk, we talked, uh, Talk quite a while one on one on on the phone right after right after all that other nonsense settled down where he told everybody he wanted to stay in Baylor <laughs> forever that was that was a big deal you know that was a big big deal because I had talked to him just briefly before the final four and it was hoping to talk to him again right after the final four and and then obviously uh, all that other stuff was going on so once that died down we, we we got back on the phone and visited some more and I was just just honored and uh, excited that that uh, we were having those conversations and then we just talked a few more times, uh, got on the Zoom with the staff, and just, just, just a lot of things lined up. A lot of things made a lot of sense. And, uh, you know, hopefully he had enough respect for, for me and where, where I'd been and the way we had done things. Uh, certainly I had a ton of respect for what's going on over here in Waco with, with uh, the beta program. Coach, uh, obviously, um, you are a tremendously positive person, uh, and you have to be to even probably interview with Coach Drew. Do you <laughs> now feel like you have to raise your level of positivity? You know what? It, it, you're right on. You are right on point. You, you're, you're, you got to raise your positivity. You got to raise your energy. Uh, he just exudes it. I mean, I knew that. I knew that about him. But man, just get on the phone with him a couple times, and then get on a Zoom with him, and then meeting with him in person. Yeah, it's amazing his energy level. Uh, he goes and goes and goes, and his staff they do they do a great job of working together. Everybody chips in. It's just a just a, like a beehive around this office. I've only been here a couple of days, but uh, it, it's it's amazing watching this this group of coaches operate. Several new guys, as, I know, as you mentioned, uh, and a couple guys getting promoted from within. But man, these guys are hustling and working. And it's a uh, it's an exciting place. You better you got to keep up. You got to keep up because they're ripping and running. You also work for a guy that is known for being an incredible uh, class act, uh, 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 just a great human being, and Lon Kruger. Uh, yeah. How much did you uh, did you learn from him, and how much can you compare kind of the personalities? Yeah, that's a great point. You know, Coach Kruger, I played for Coach Kruger. I signed to play for him at K-State, and then uh, when my playing days were over, I, I joined his staff and just tried to soak it in, you know, not only the X's and O's, Coach Kruger was a great tactician, but just the way he treated people every single day, the way he treated players, people in the community, um, that, that really made a big impact on me. He was doing the same things when I was a player, but I didn't notice those as much. Uh, when I started working for him, it just, just made a bigger impact. And, and uh, yeah, and then you get over here, and, and, and Coach Drew is all about culture. They're different, and, you know, Scott, you know, very animated, very high energy, all that. Coach mm -hmm. Drew's a little more low-key, but when you talk about – high character people there aren't aren't many in the business uh, anywhere near those two in, in that regard so again that's what really just made me so excited to, to, for this opportunity to come about i had somebody tell me this that uh, you steve henson at oklahoma was what john jacobs was at baylor when it comes to guard play and offense is that a fair description well you know everybody everybody uh 
I say that not everybody does. We got some guys on the staff that are chomping us a bit. We want to put some defensive drills in today. People love tinkering with the offense, and I do too. Yeah, I learned a lot from Coach Kruger in that regard. Um, watching him operate and tinker with things offensively, uh, it was kind of fascinating sitting in those meetings. And uh, one of my best friends was on his staff for years and years and years. He felt like. There was often times when we were in the room that, that maybe he and I were talking about things just, just so eye to eye on the same level and same page with everything. And so I try to soak in those things. Yeah, I, I enjoy that it was part of the game. Uh, spent a lot of time working with the guards. There was a stretch where I intentionally asked if I could work more with the big guys just to help myself grow as an assistant coach years ago. I wanted to be able to, you know, check all those boxes, but I uh, spent a lot of times with guards. We had great guards, you know, all the all the stops we were at over the years, we had really good guard play, which is why we why we won a lot of ball games at all those stops. It's just so important at every level. You know, you've got to have terrific guard play, and, and uh, yeah, I, I do enjoy working with those guys, and, uh, trying to help them improve and, and think think like a point. You know, it's hard to convert guys, but some some guys that's the case. They come in and they've got the talent, but maybe not the vision, maybe not the leadership required to play the position. So, uh, yeah, those, those are areas I, I I really enjoy. You um. You mentioned being able to teach, like you can't sometimes teach somebody how to think like a point or be a point guard. Is that, um, is that maybe the only position that that works with? Because you because you do have so many different res- responsibilities than the other four on the floor. I think it's the hardest position to convert to. You know, you, you can slide over the other direction. You can you can help guys. Uh, chain, but but yeah, the point the point guard's tough. I mean, there's a lot on their plate. They've got to understand time and score. They got to understand who's got the hot hand. They got to understand the flow of the game. Um, and and certain guys have you know have the ball handling ability or the scoring ability, uh, the, the ability to beat people off the dribble. But there's a lot more that goes into it than that. And, and I think a lot of high school kids when they make that, that adjustment coming into college, they realize that that there's just so much more on their plate. Uh, so it's, it's fun. To, take a talented guy and, and help him grow in that regard. Um, you know, obviously we've got some guys um, in this program. We'll have, we'll have some guards with unbelievable division one experience. Uh, and we'll have a, we'll have a high school kid coming in. That's just incredibly talented. So mm-hmm. it'll be fun to, to help those two. And then hopefully they help each other. Uh, somebody asked me to follow up with the decathlete comment that I made earlier. <laughs> what was your most, uh, what, what of the events in the decathlete was where you scored your most points? <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I kind of went about it the opposite way of, of the guys that are really good at it. If there's 10 <laughs> events, um, speed is important. Let's, let's not, let's not uh, mistake for that. But, but I was growing up, was around track my entire life. I grew up in a small, relatively small town in Kansas, but we all, we all experimented it, with it like at eight or nine years old, and I just fell in love with it. The, there was a small college right outside my – just a – 100 yards outside my back door, there was a McPherson College was there, and I would spend day, hours every day over there just messing around, long jumping, high jumping. Um, so I learned learned to – I was a very good high jumper at an early age, and I got a junior high and started pole vaulting and throwing the javelin. So if you can if you can pole vault and high jump and throw the discus and javelin, you know, then, then you're off to a pretty good start. So that, that's kind of how my love for it came about. Um I was, I was a seven foot high jumper, so that was probably my best event. And as a javelin, I was a state champion in the javelin, so I scored a lot of points in those. Usually, usually the, uh, the, the high jump, pole vault, javelin, fifteen hundred, all the throws. I was pretty good. I just I fall so far behind in the hundred and long jump. I was playing <laughs> catch the whole time. Hey. I was short, but I was slow. You know, so. yeah, they all count though. I mean, that's why there's that's why there's ten of them. Uh, and, yeah, no, that, that's exactly right. But, what uh, was, when I got into college, the, the, the speed events just uh, caught up with me. I just couldn't couldn't overcome the, the lack of speed. Former Kansas State Wildcat with us, uh, Steve Henson, now part of Scott Drew's staff at Baylor, played in the NBA, Hawks and the Bucks and the Charlotte Hornets, uh, coached in the NBA too. What was uh, – and, I mean, Pistons, you were part of the, uh, play, the Blazers. What was uh, – the most interesting as a player or a coach in the NBA? Well, first thing, not exactly what you're asking, but right off the, right out of the gates, you know, when you, 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 anytime you move from one level to the next, you just notice the, the size and the quickness, you know, there's a, there's a lane there. You think you can get in that lane and it closes down quicker. There's a passing lane. You pass it and the guy flex it. The guys are just bigger and faster and better period. Um, you know, I, I bounced, you just rattled off a whole bunch of, whole bunch of teams. And when I was playing in the NBA, it w- would have been ideal. I thought at the time to, 
to stay with the Milwaukee Bucks. I was drafted in the second round by the Bucks. Loved it there. Wish I could have played my whole career there. I mean, that's what you want generally um, is, is to not bounce around a ton. But looking back now, I'm so grateful that that happened because it gave me the opportunity to experience. I got to play with a bunch of Hall of Famers. You know, I got to play with uh, uh, Jack Stickma, Moses Malone mm. in, in Milwaukee, Dominique Wilkins in Atlanta, and Grant Hill in, in Detroit, and Clyde Drexler in Portland, and it kind of goes on and on. So, so from that standpoint, I'm glad I bounced, bounced around. And then also just to learn from different staffs. You know, um, I went to training camp one year with Don Nelson. I went to a summer league with Pat Riley. I played for Dell Harris. I played went to training camp with Lenny Wilkins. So I just again tried to tried to take bits and pieces from each one of those guys and, and then store it in my memory banks or put it put it down on paper. Uh, things that I could draw on years later. We still up until last year when I was coaching at UTSA, we still used a numbering system that was based off of something I learned from Dell Harris in 1990, my mm. first year in the NBA. So. Um, just try to draw on all those experiences. Most of them were positive, but there were a few things that I witnessed over the years uh, that's okay. I definitely don't want to do it that way. You know, you can learn from, from that as well. But uh, really grateful now that, that I did have the opportunity to bounce around. I got the experience playing in the CBA, which is similar to the G League now. Uh, played internationally in, in Italy and Greece. And uh, wow. uh, just hopefully that gives me a, a, a perspective from the player's point of view. And, and again, learned so much from all those different styles. So um, you were a hawk in the. So that means you played with Dominique Wilkins, right? Correct. Uh, what was that like? I mean, I don't know. Like, I could ask a t- ton of questions. I'll just simplify it. What was it like to be on the court with a guy who could do what he did? Oh, it was amazing. It was, it's funny because you know Dominique. You think of the of a human highlight reel. I mean, he scored thousands and thousands. Of, he was like a little kid almost. You know, you, it was just you just. Just Dominique, when he's your teammate, you look at him a little bit differently. But yeah, you can easily get caught. You know, and I, I spent a lot of time on the bench. Let's not mistake it. <laughs> I spent more time watching from the bench than I did on the court. But in Atlanta, I was in the rotation every night. I backed up Mookie Blaylock, and, and so I played every single night. Um, but you could get caught. You could get caught watching. Um, when, you know, when you're on the court with him too, because he was going to do some amazing things there. So um, he just just had an unbelievable feel for making buckets and, and, and making exciting buckets night in, night out. Steve Henson is now on Scott Drew's staff at Baylor, hired. Uh, the, the staff has been filled out and completed. I had Kevin Gall, who's a part of Baylor Athletics Senior Administration, made uh, sent me a note or two. Tim Maloney, who's like uh, an unbelievable basketball historian. I was on the phone with him last night uh, and have yep. talked to him a couple of times. But Brent Ingram, uh, media relations, uh, vice president media relations at Baylor, and handles football, but he handled basketball. He was at UTSA when you were there. He made the comment about how it was great that you are uh, everything everyone's been saying about you. And have you seen Brent yet since you've been on campus? I have. I have. And, you know, honestly, that's really how all this started. You know, we, I spent some time with Brent when he was over at UTSA. He came over here, and, and I just – he got to know uh, he got to know me a little bit in the brief time he was there, and he came over here – and he was the one that reached out and really encouraged me to reach out to Coach Drew. Mm. And uh, just, just uh, that's kind of how we got this thing started. And I've known, you know, Kevin Gall, of course, for a long time as well. And uh, to have some of those those people uh, talking, you know, to both sides, it just just sounded like um, there, there, it made a lot of sense for a lot of reasons. And uh, there was a little bit of staff turnover, and and you know, just kept telling Coach Drew, you know, hey, I've been been a head coach the last eight years. You know, he has not had much staff turnover it's been Absolutely. terrific you know, guys, yeah. they, when you when you do well your your, your assistants are going to have time uh, opportunities to move on and, and every head coach wants that and coach drew's got an unbelievable coaching tree all across the country right now but he had a little bit more turnover this this spring than, than usual and and i went through the same thing a year ago so i, I felt like maybe i could come in here with a little different perspective i'm going to understand some of the things that that uh, you know he might be feeling and uh, maybe i can uh, address those from a little different point of view, but but ultimately, I, I think it came down to just uh, being on the same page culturally, spiritually. Uh, obviously, for me, this was an unbelievable opportunity. Uh, was, was did not want to sit out a year. I wanted to jump right back in, and man, it's like a home run, you know. Come to come to Baylor, where it's you know, going to be competing for a national championship. 
we're going to do things right. We're going to look forward to seeing each other every single day, and uh, it's just a very special place. So, Steve, I know you were at UTSA, and it didn't always go well. And there, there were, you know, they're brand new. Jeff Trailers football. I've known Jeff forever. We all have. He was on the show earlier this week, and what they've done. What did you learn about yourself as a head coach at UTSA? What do you What do you take out of all that? Yeah, that's a great question. You know, it, it was it was looking back on it. You know, we we, we understand a couple of things that that kept us from turning the corner. We took a program that was at the bottom and we, we, we made a, made huge strides in the early years. Year one was one of the most rewarding years we had. We overachieved and then we brought in a bunch of talent, had the chance to coach uh, the second highest scoring duo in NCAA history. We had two little guards in the program for four years that were incredible. Javon Jackson, and Keaton Wallace, and uh, finished tied for second in the league one year. And um, just, just, just couldn't quite get over the hump there, but, Looking back, don't have many regrets. You know, my staff was great. They stayed loyal to me. Uh, we fought and, and competed all the way till the end. So, um, you know, I, th- I think there's some things I I feel like I'm at a point now where, where I'm, I'm going to come into this with a little more experience, experience from the head coach seat, but with a hunger just like I had uh, eight or nine years ago when I was an assistant in Oklahoma. You know, my, my objective when I was in Oklahoma was to, to – help coach Kruger on a daily basis, you know, be the best assistant coach I could be. You know, I've always been a approach thing with a worker's mentality. You know, I'm just going to work and work and work. And that's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to try to help coach Drew, help the other assistants, help the younger assistants, uh, you know, help us uh, do things the right way off the court and help us win ball games. That, that's my objective every day. And, and I found some areas that I think I can continue to grow with. Well, uh, here's the way I want to close this out, if you don't mind. And this is one of the other things that was said about you. And Coach Drew has had a tight – he's got a spider web and what the coaching tree is like is amazing. But also, he has had his kind of his inner circle. Um, yes. One of the things that was said, and that's why you're, you're hiring, I said, it says a lot about you. No enemies with great respect from everyone. When I say that to you, what does that mean to you? Well, I just learned behavior. You know, that goes back to, to what I what I witnessed. You know, my dad was a legendary high school coach in Kansas, Hall of Fame high school coach. He treated people the right way. Uh, I signed to play for Coach Kruger and then just watched him. You know, for all those years, um, you, you can you can do things the right way and have a lot of success. And that's that's just the the route I decided to go. You know, it, it just there's a lot of hate in this world. There's a lot of anger, and those are those are hate. Hate's just an ugly word. So I just try to p- treat people with respect. Um, the basketball world is small. Things come around. Things come full circle, you know. So uh, you're much better off just treating people with, with love and kindness and uh, helping people out because, uh, A, it's the right thing to do, and, and B, uh, come back around in a positive way when you least expect it. Steve, thank you very much. Congratulations on the opportunity. Welcome uh, to uh, Waco. We'll see you down the road. We appreciate your time. Heard so many great things about you. And uh, enjoy what you get now what around that program and what you bring to the program, too. Have a great day. Well, thank you so much. I don't, I don't take this for granted. It's an unbelievable opportunity. I look forward to visiting with you guys some more and having a great time here at Baylor. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Steve Henson, now part of the Baylor men's basketball staff right there with uh, 